This is one of those kinds of questions where part of the challenge is just getting over the way that it's written and you're like, how do I even, how do I even sort out what's going on, right? Now I think in some ways you get an advantage in that when they say this, right? Unlike the question I just showed you, this kind of locks you in. You're like, okay, if I remember my processes right, there's only really one way to solve this, and then it comes down to just arithmetic and algebra, okay? But the, the key is getting the approach right. Uh, where people fell down, as I flick through the papers, where people fell down was not in the arithmetic algebra, it was in the setup. It was getting it from here to what was your line of working, and then if you got that right, you just went for it and it was fine, okay? So, when I highlight this in green, what's the formula, what's the result that we're going to be taking advantage of? 10 theta, where theta is the angle between the lines, what's it equal to? <laughs> Absolute value of M1 minus M2 on 1 plus M1 M2. Okay, does that make sense? Now just recall, based on the fact that it's absolute value, right? Uh, these two here and these two here, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. You just kind of want to make it convenient to you. When you have a look at these two lines, they've been given to you in general form, which is not very nice, but it's not impossible to work with them, right? If I designate this line one and I designate this one line two, just think for a second, without doing... Because we can do this, right? Without doing any paper calculations, what would we have to do with this to get the gradient out of it? Like, don't do it, just tell me what we'd have to do. Okay, yep, so... I suppose, yeah, I, I want to make y the subject so I have mx plus b4, right? So just for my sake... Jitsu, Jitsu. It's a good conversation. Like, keep having it, just at a quarter of the volume, okay? Let me say that again. I want to make y the subject, so, I mean, you can move y across the other side, I suppose. I personally think about moving the x over to the other side. I don't care about the constant because it doesn't affect the gradient, right? So this is going to become what on the other side? It'll be minus ax, and then to get mx plus b, I'm just going to divide by 3, right? So without having to write anything down, bam, I have a gradient. Do you see what I've done? Right? These are the little time-saving things. If you ran out of time, it was a short space of time. These are the kinds of things where, yes, it's okay. Like, look at the number of marks. Are they really trying to determine whether you can manipulate an equation? No, they're not. They're trying to see, once you've got this, can you do this part? This is what we're assessing, right? So this is where you're trying to work out, oh, where do I put extra lines of working? Where can I skip over it, right? Well, where is it critical to the question? In exactly the same way, what gradient are you going to get out of this? And move this guy over, it'll become minus ax, right? And then you divide by minus 2, so the negatives cancel. So as you've just told me, a over 2, right? Happy? So now, I can compute this, right? I've got two pieces of information, or I should say three pieces of information to fit into it. Number one, I know what tan theta is, so I can just say 2. And then over here on the right-hand side, I'm just going to feed in my two gradients, okay? Now because, like I know I've written m1, m2, m1, m2. But because of what I said, the absolute value, I can be a bit loosey-goosey with them. You're going to get the same result either way. The angle between the two lines is always going to be the angle between the two lines. This absolute value just gives you... Do you remember why we do absolute value? Which angle are we after? We want the positive result which gives the acute angle for tan because it keeps you in that first quadrant. Is this ringing bells? Okay. So being that I can do it either way, I'm just going to put the positive one first because I can. Right, so I've got a over 2 minus negative a over 3 all over 1 plus this. Okay, you happy with that? Alright, suggestions. What should I do at this point? Think what, what mental strategy would make this easiest to work with? <laughs> Jumping to the answer directly would make it the easiest, if you can. For those who can't, like me, I'm going to get rid of all of these messy fractions. Gross, okay. So what am I going to get? Oh, five. Okay, five, so, five, so what's going to happen on the top? Five a. This is going to become... Three, three a. Three a plus, minus, plus, minus two a. Two a. Minus, minus two. 
Okay, it's right. double negative, right? What's happening on that denominator? Six this plus becomes plus a six, plus and then this minus becomes plus minus plus a. Uh, sorry, yes, that's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're happy with that, okay? Now, when I have a look at this, right? I've got an absolute value of something is equal to two. Is equal to two. So if I said to you. The absolute value of x is equal to 2, right? This means that x can take on two values, right? Because absolute value, it, you've got that reflection, right? What two values can x take? It can be plus or minus 2. Does that make sense? This is a spot that people fell down on. Because a lot of people saw, oh, cool. I have a positive over here. I have a positive over here. I can just ignore my absolute value signs. And to me, you can't. Because you don't really know that this is positive. Who knows what A is? If you choose the right A, it'll be negative, right? Actually, all you need to do is A being negative. <coughs> so therefore, in order to get rid of this absolute value sign, I have to say plus or minus 2. And then on the top, you've got 5A, 6 minus A squared. Okay, yes, all right. So A, A can't be plus or minus root 6. Hooray. All right. Now, thankfully, thankfully, given the number of marks, that wasn't something they really paid attention to. So if you missed that out, um, then it's, it's no big deal. Okay. Uh, really, it would have come in here, I suppose. But aside from that. Okay. Now, at this point, I think we've done all the hard work, really. I think, I think that was the hardest part of the question. If you got here, students who got to this point pretty much got it. The, the big traps are all gone. Okay. But just in case you're... Um, curious what direction does this go in it's a plus or minus so what that really means is I'm solving two completely separate equations right I've got this guy 5a on 6 minus a squared equals minus 2 that's case 1 um, or 5a on 6 minus a squared equals positive 2 and that's case 2 right uh, you'll get your solutions out of that and as you can see because this a squared disregards, this sort of takes out the effect of whether it's positive or negative or not. He doesn't care. Up here, the difference between 5a giving you a negative and 5a being a positive is the solutions you get out of this will just be plus or minus each other. That's all you're going to get. So once you've converted these into a quadratic, you solve. That's how you get to your four solutions. Plus or minus one and a half. Plus or minus. <laughs> okay. 